Hi and welcome along to Channel 4's The Real Football Fan Show podcast with me, Robbie Lyle. The show that's made for the fans. <laughs> on today's show, we put Ashley Walters on the spot and we look forward to another huge weekend up and down the country with you, the fans. I'm out on the street getting your thoughts and predictions on the weekend's games. We'll be playing our fan quiz with our studio guests and of course, I'll be making them challenge Robbie. As ever, we'll be hearing the news and views from you, the real fans out there from outside the grounds and all over the country, all on this week's The Real Football Fan Show. May for the fans. Now, first of all, let's uh, introduce our guest, ladies first. We've got Gillian, a Burnley fan. How are you doing, Gillian? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, a lot better than uh, you would have been doing last week after that big win last week. Definitely. All right. Real mix feel a lot better. All right, we'll talk about that as well. We've got Drifty, who's sitting pretty, Liverpool fan. It's all brilliant. It's going brilliantly at the moment. Through to the next round of the Champions League. Uh, you know, top of the league. You're top of the league now. Yeah, I mean, we might as well keep going. We've been doing it all. We've been doing it all. All right, well, will it be like that in May? That's the thing. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we've also got Alex, who's got a big smile on his face because he's a Chelsea fan, and that was a huge win last week over Man City. So you're feeling good? Uh, feeling good, but, you know, we'll see about the next few weeks, you know. It's okay. looking to the future now. Okay, well, listen, let's start straight off by focusing on that game. That was a big game of last weekend. <laughs> Chelsea versus Manchester City. Just before I get your opinions on it, Alex, let's hear what a couple of uh, fans had to say. Uh, first of all, a Chelsea fan, then a Man City fan. Sporting the team when the team was not that good, and then sporting the team today when we didn't think we were going to win. Uh, how good was that? How good was that when we won today 2 0? And first half, we hardly had a, one chance in the first half, scored. Fantastic, wasn't it? When, you, when you're an underdog, it's so much better than when you expect it to win, isn't it? Oh, 100%. It was so much sweeter today. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you think about N'Golo Kante playing further forward? Do you think it works? Obviously, everyone realises he should be sitting in front of the back four. Everyone realises that. Today it worked, but long term, it's not going to work, is it? No. You know, so he should be sitting in back, front of the back four, Jovanovic or Bartley playing. He's got to change it a little bit, you know. We realise that, don't we? Yeah. So today is, is a success, but, you know. We're still champions, pal. <laughs> we are. It is a disappointing result, but we are champions and yeah. we will come back and we will be stronger. Sorry for my language, but fuck Liverpool. We don't care. Alex, what a big win that was for Chelsea. I've got to admit, last week in Challenge Robbie, I predicted that uh, Man City would win. I mean, look, frankly speaking, before the game, you talk to every fan out there, every Chelsea fan, they're going to say, you know what, it's going to be 4 5 nil loss. You as go, bad as that? Yeah, I mean, it's as bad are, as that. There, there, are fans, there are actually fans that believed we were going to lose, they were going to be thrashing, or it was actually going to be outstanding. There was no midway. No one was going to believe it was going to be a draw. So, you know, everyone was worried. And, you know, I was really desperate personally to get a draw for this game at minimum because, you know, it's crucial for us to actually perform in big games. And, you know, winning 2-0 is just fantastic because mm. it shows that, you know, we're here to put pressure on the likes of Man City on Liverpool to say, look, yes, you're doing well. But don't think you're going to run off with the league. Mm. We're going to put up a test for you guys. And as I said, you know, in the end, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think anybody could argue that Chelsea deserved to win that game because, you know, the second half performance was outstanding. Yeah. That, I mean, honestly, that was amazing. And, you know, just before that, I mean, the goal by Kante, the fact that Hazard manages to put that into the centre, that there's nobody in that centre of the box. And mm. then Kante just, you know, puts it in into the top corner. It's like, I mean, I'm actually still, still buzzing. I'm still buzzing. <laughs> and then you have the David Luiz header. Oh Yeah, that was my. a great header. That was a great header. Which actually, though, some Man City fans are claiming that it was supposed, supposed to be a corner because mm. there was actually a slight defection off stones. But who knows? Uh, it was, I think, very slight. But, you know, I guess you move on to mm. no win. It's good. But then, was, of course... Were you impressed you know, by it, Drifty, as a, as, a, as a Liverpool? I bet you would have been happy because, you know, <laughs> um, obviously a lot of people are saying it's between Liverpool and Man City to win the title. And mm. that loss meant that you guys went top. You had a really impressive win. 
over Bournemouth, beating them 4 0. A hat trick for Mo Salah. A lot of people have been saying King since Mo. the start of the season that Salah is a one hit wonder. You know what I mean? He's not going to do it this season. Oh, He's doing mean, it again, isn't he? The haters. <laughs> the haters, yeah. <laughs> well. You He's know, doing it again though, isn't he? He's proving them wrong. Yeah, I mean, that 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 was kind of I wouldn't I wouldn't say Man City buckled under pressure because they don't really do that. But I think if we'd have drawn or dropped points in that game, I feel like maybe they might have been a bit more relaxed in the Chelsea game. That's the first time for a while we've gone first mm. and then they have watched their top spot go. And I feel like maybe that coupled with the fact that Chelsea Whatever it was, divine intervention, I don't know, because like you said, in that first half, they mm. were being peppered. And David Luiz putting on a defensive masterclass, that doesn't happen. Yeah. But whatever it was that got them through that first half, um, it was amazing. I've never cheered for Chelsea so much in my <laughs> life. <laughs> it felt wrong. It felt so wrong. Like, the levels of wrong I felt. Like, I had to have a bath afterwards. I was like, Ugh. You know what I mean? But, like, I was in the bath with a glass of champagne. I was like... <laughs> Scarface stuff. <yeah. laughs> but I, I don't know how long we'll be there for. But, you know, at least we're there. But really. listen, as I said, Salah, he's doing bits. You know what I mean? He um, scored in the Champions League. Don't get me wrong, even us Liverpool friends, like, I've been saying it for weeks, like, can whoever's kidnapped Mo give him back, please? Because <laughs> we had a clone playing for about four or five weeks. <laughs> but I'm, now I've just figured out at the beginning of every season, I just think he just takes a little while to warm up. Harry Kane was kind of the same. You know, you get a few players, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't mean they're not top quality. They just take a while. We had the World Cup, the disappointment of that, the injury, mm. uh, the whole Egypt And it's um, always going to be hard to repeat thing. what he's done oh, yeah, No, we know we won't year, get you know? 44 goals again, but he's a winger. I mean, all right, he's playing at front at the moment, but he isn't meant to get 44 goals, mm. you know what I mean? But um, yeah, he's a star, man, he's a star. Forget all of those big teams, you know, you had <laughs> Chelsea's with their millions and Liverpool with their millions. Burnley. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about right yes. now, Gillian. What a great performance by Burnley. Yes. You know, 1 0. Well, ground it out. Ground it out. <laughs> ground you know, it out. But it was a very important win. I mean, Brighton, it was vital. They, Brighton have been going away and getting some good results this season and the way Burnley had been going mm. um, that was a very really important three points wasn't it? Yeah it was vital especially with the games we've got coming up with Tottenham away and then Arsenal away so um, it was a really big opportunity for us to get the win and really really important um, and absolutely delighted that we got it because this season has not been um, anything near what anyone was expecting Why? following what's, last what's season. What's gone wrong with Burnley? I mean Sean Dyche has been doing he had a brilliant season last year and then this season, it's like almost you're watching Burnley and like all the things they did well last year, particularly defending, they're yeah. doing so poorly this year. There were a lot of um, close results last year that went in our favour and also a lot of teams that weren't really performing to their best either. So I think we took advantage last season and last season was an exceptional season for us and no one predicted it. I would say this season is probably more in line with what you'd expect <laughs> from Burnley <laughs> but the mentality's not been there, whether that's been the impact of Europe and starting the season so early. We didn't strengthen as much as we could mm. um, pre-season uh, we haven't got the biggest squad. We've been hit by a lot of injuries. And also, I don't think anyone can underestimate the impact of losing Nick Pope. Mm. Um, him coming through last season following Tom Heaton's injury was completely unexpected. You've got Joe Hart now. I know. You've got about I 10 know. goalkeepers there, haven't you? I know. We've got three. We've got three England goalkeepers. You've got three England goalkeepers. <laughs> Being greedy. But, um, yeah, I think the way that Pope interacts with, with the back four um, mm. and the way that he commands the area, Joe Hart has his qualities, but I, I still think that um, Nick Pope is slightly better keeper. Mm. You know, um, we went out and we asked fans um, before that Chelsea game, Could, can anybody stop? Manchester City. This is what fans have to say. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Liverpool, maybe. You know, depend. Massive game in uh, January. I think it's between City and Liverpool. No, I don't. I don't think City will run away with it. But I think it's going to be tight all season. I just think we're that far ahead of them now that no chance. Uh, I think Liverpool has the best chance this year. Yeah. Of course, I uh, hope for miracle for the Chelsea side, but it will be difficult this year. It's a transition year for Chelsea, so I think next year it will be much 
Much better. It's nice to see it closer than what it has been. Um, I think that's due to the Liverpool purchases, I must admit. Um, but Manchester City do look strong. They look to have the complete squad. I think I think Liverpool might be a midfielder short, attacking midfielder. I think Chelsea a couple of forward short. Um, and I think Arsenal's still a bit sceptical at the back, yeah. if I'm honest. I think Manchester United are in turmoil and are out of the game. And I think Tottenham don't know where they are at the moment. And that's not on a geographical sense at the ground. <laughs> but they, I think they are, they're up in the end. They have been for the last couple of seasons. Um, so I, maybe Pochettino won't stay there. Cause I, it's coming to the end of his tenure. I think he's getting a bit fed up of them constantly being in no man's land. One other thing that I have to touch on, and that was from that Chelsea game, was that whole incident with the fans, with the racism yeah. thing, where, you know, the, the, the alleged racism, should I say, mm. where now these guys, they've been banned, yeah. pending investigation. You as a Chelsea fan, you go there on a regular basis. What do you think of this? This is happening too much at Chelsea now, isn't it? I mean, you guys, you got a bit of form for this, didn't it? It happened, mm. there was that incident on the train that time, the John Terry thing. I mean, see the thing is, I think every club has a racist fan. It's it's not just Chelsea, uh, but the thing is, I think we're put more in the spotlight, which is a bit unfortunate. And I really don't accept this type of behavior. I think it's completely immoral. But at the same time, you know, you have to treat this this type of situation as it is and try and make sure that the authorities deal with it properly, that the club handle it properly. Did you, do you, when you go to Chelsea, mm. have you ever experienced any <sighs> racism? I, I mean, actually, I'm not, I'm not just picking on Chelsea. Mm. I'll ask all of you guys. When you go to Liverpool, when you go to Burnley, have you ever experienced... Because me at Arsenal, I have to say that I have before heard fans say inappropriate things. Um, I remember when in Arsene Wenger's last season, Lot, some fans sometimes saying, oh, you French this, and I had to turn around to a fan one time and say, why are you got to say French? Mm. Like, even though it's not black or whatever, but it's still, for me, I, I still look on that and say, why are you got to say you know, French? I still mm. hear the Y word at Arsenal in, in, when talking about Tottenham fans and things like that. So, is it still there? Yeah, I mean, it, it will always be there. I mean, look, there's, 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 there's there. always banter between clubs. It's that's more that. than banter though, well, isn't it? Yes, I, there, I don't, that, for there me, is also a level that actually shouldn't be reached. And personally, I haven't experienced it yet, which I think is good. Mm. But at the same time, it's not like I won't experience ever. There will be a stage in everyone's lives where there will be in front of their eyes, either from their friends or basically themselves that so will you, experience racism. You just think it's a society problem. You don't think it's a particular problem. I don't, I don't think problem. it's just football related. I think it's a general thing. Yeah. Yes. What about you, Julian? Uh, Burnley? I, I don't particularly see a lot of it personally, but every club has its fans and, and it is like society M majority of the so society behave in a particular way you get the odd idiot that doesn't and it's the same with any kind of football club I'd probably say mm. the same yeah, for yeah. everybody you, you drifted you, you you know um, what, what do you think of the situation? I haven't it hasn't been aimed towards me so yeah I've, I, it happens everywhere and it is a society problem it it's nothing to do with football it's about Everybody and something that we definitely, definitely got to try and get. Out. It's, it's improved a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but what, the other thing is as well, Raheem Sterling. Why is it always seems to be that he <sighs> seems to be that picked on player? What, what has he done to deserve but, that? I, I mean, you know, you you heard him even mm -hmm. come out and say that he. It, it was interesting what he said because he wasn't really having a go so much at the fan. He was having a go at the media and saying that the media are the ones that are causing. Yeah these fans are behaving that way. Well, what do you think of that, Julian? I think it, it's true to a certain extent <coughs> because I've heard a lot of rumours or like me media portrayal of Sterling and when you actually go away and research it, it, it he's nothing like that. Mm. So the media have portrayed him in a particular way and if, if people haven't gone away and looked and, and seen that other side of him, then he is a target for, for people, mm. I think. But I think opposite fans will just use any opportunity to have a go, and particularly someone who is a good talent, mm. they're just going to throw anything at him. Is it for you, with the Sterling thing, is it just that fans recognise that he's a really good player and they're just trying to get into him? I think or does it go beyond that? Is it more sinister than that? See, I mean, I think the, um, the newspapers do feel it, uh, feel 
all of it. Um, they, they are basically the ones who kind of started the speculation. You know, all those different uh, problems on that front for Sterling. I mean, he's not the only black player who has basically had these problems. Ashley Cole has had that. Mm. Many players yeah. before him has yeah. had that pro those problems. He's not the first one. The problem is, how do we make sure it doesn't happen again? That's up to the newspapers, and that is, that is up to the fans to make sure that you know they try and help to make mm. sure it doesn't happen do again. You, do you think, Drifty, that this is gonna with, with Sterling coming out and being so open with what he said about the newspapers mm. fueling a lot of this? Do you think it's gonna change their attitudes, or do you think that they'll just sweep it <sighs> under the carpet and then again they'll be back on his case whenever the next incident? Because I they wouldn't do, be surprised. They do seem he does seem to be a player that gets picked on. Mm. You as a Liverpool fan. We, we know that when he left Liverpool, that mm. was very controversial. You know what I mean? There's a lot of Liverpool fans really upset. Mm -hmm. They felt that he'd gone for the, for the money. I can understand why Liverpool fans would really tear into him. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, just like Arsenal fans, how he teared into Ashley Cole when he left, right? But mm. why is it that every single club across the country seem to have this hatred of Sterling? Is that the newspapers fueling that? Yeah, I, I definitely think that he, you know, um, it's a little bit like, um, say, Sissoko at Tottenham. He's not a bad player, but because... He's having a good season, Sissoko. Because now. everyone has a go at him, it's easy to pile on top. Yeah. I don't know what started him being this scapegoat, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But now everyone's like... He'll have a good game when people will say he's crap and it makes no sense. Mm. Um, so I definitely think the media have made everybody just feel they can pile on. I hate to admit Liverpool have to take some responsibility for this because... A lot of people know that the media do like Liverpool because we were the team back in the day. We represent uh, England in Europe, so to speak. So the media will be a little bit more kinder to us, I have to be honest. And I think because he did us dirty, it made everybody a little bit more angry at him. Mm. I do think he went for money, but who doesn't? This isn't a black thing. All players think about money, do you know what I mean? Mm. And um, I, I hate to admit it, but I think it's also because he's Jamaican born. I think if you look at some of the other black players that don't get as much stick, they're born here, like Rashford, for example. Mm. I think there is this kind of, he wasn't born here that fuels certain... If you're a racist, being born here will make you be a little bit... But if you're not born here, it's something that really gets to mm. people, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Listen, it's, it's just this... For me, I find it hard that in 2018 we're still discussing these type... Mm. It's like we could be having this conversation back in the 90s. You know, uh, what you're day. talking about there is almost like we we're talking about John Barnes still, you know what yeah. I mean? So they, it is, it, they, it is they, ridiculous. They, I, I believe that the people who are still racist wish they could still be like that, but they have to keep it to themselves. Mm. But every now and again, it just bubbles up and bubbles out and they're like, oh, I lost control there. Do mm. you know what I mean? And that's what happened with those guys in the Chelsea game. It yeah. just boiled over and then afterwards, they must have been like, oh man, we let that out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So well, hopefully we won't get any of that surely this weekend. I, I said that the previous weekend when we did that banana thing. But <laughs> hopefully we won't get any of that this weekend. There's some, some great games to look forward to mm -hmm. this weekend. And um, I went out on the streets and asked the fans um, about those games and got their predictions. So we've got a fan here, um, Ralph. Ralph, your predictions, the big one at the weekend, Liverpool versus Man United. Man United, 2-1. Yeah, you reckon they, you reckon they can go to Anfield get a win? Yeah, yeah, all day long. And uh, Brighton versus Chelsea? Chelsea, 4-0. Chelsea will have it all day long. Arsenal going away to Southampton. Win, 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 win. Make no mistake, win. 3-1 yeah? if they get lucky. 3-1 to who? Arsenal, like, it, even, if it, even if they get one goal, that's lucky for them. Southampton, that's Mickey Mouse, man. Come on, we're good. Okay. <laughs> what about um, the big one at the weekend, which is uh, Liverpool versus Man United? I think Liverpool would win, probably. Liverpool but, win? Yeah, but I would wish okay. for a draw and a um, few injuries as well. <laughs> so I'm a bit cruel. Great games to look forward to this weekend. And of course, the big one, the big one. If you're a Liverpool fan or you're a Man United fan, is Liverpool versus Manchester United. The hatred is real, it's real. between these two teams. It they so hate real. each other, right? We got Drifty here. Should be an easy game for you guys, though, isn't it? Man United, they're, they're, they're on the ropes at the moment. I mean, yeah, they did beat Fulham last week, but the way you lot unbeaten. Yeah. However, Matt, nothing would please a man. I was chatting to one a couple of days ago. 
And he said, Robbie, if we can go there and end their little unbeaten run at Anfield, he goes, there'd be nothing sweeter. I'm telling you, man, they, that's all they want. <laughs> that's all they want, they, that irony. They're coming. The irony of, oh, they used to always call us the team that talked about history and, uh, and you know, we only care about a game to stop them winning the league and now it's completely flip-flop. It would be the highlight of their season, if it, it would be. Not we would win never, else. It would keep Mourinho in the job till the end of the year, probably. <laughs> uh, till the end listen, of the season, uh, so. Mourinho is good at these type of mm. games when everybody's written him off and said he's got no chance, Liverpool are going to win easy, they've got this great record at Anfield, blah, blah. Mm. He's good at coming and spoiling the party, isn't he? Are, he you, are you a bit worried about this game? Yeah, yeah, because Man U will be up for this one. They, they don't need motivation for this one. They could be mid-table with nothing to play for and they will still be up for this game. And a lot of people don't know this, but Mourinho actually wanted the Liverpool job when Benitez was sacked. And he actually came to the club with a dossier of like, I could make this club great again. You know, he's got the ego. Mm. And um, Liverpool didn't really like the way he fit. And then they went with... Are you telling the truth? No, I am. And that's the reason why... (laughs) Is this another dig at Mourinho? No, but that's the reason why he hates us. Because I don't know if anyone's ever noticed, but he has like a real genuine hate for Liverpool. And that's where it comes from. A lot of people don't know that. So it doesn't matter where he is, who he's the manager of. He wants to beat Liverpool. And he will be coming... He wants to do that whole thing he did last time when they stopped us winning the league. He, he wants to do it again, he does. It, I'm never, ever going into Man U games confident regardless of what's happening because you just never know. Even under Moyes, I was always I was sceptical of the games and I just hope that we play to our full potential mm. and we. Just, I don't care how we do it. I don't care if there's a penalty that wasn't even a penalty. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to beat Man United and remain top of the league for one more week. Gillian, yes. um, easy game for you guys. You go away to Tottenham Hotspur. I mean, that is, yeah. a, that is a tough game, but they've had a really, really tough game. They're through. You know what I mean, mm. so they, you know, they'll be feeling really good about themselves because they got through against all odds, really, yeah. to the next um, round of the Champions League. Um, but you've had, a you know, Burnley week. a whole week to really, you know, plot. Could this be a chance for Burnley to go and get at least a point there? I think it's uh, the hope that we're clinging to. Um, Tottenham are a a really, really good side and obviously we're not the team um, that we've been previously. We did get a result there last season. Um, Mm -hmm. Chris Wood scored um, final minutes and he's in his first appearance. So um, there'll be good memories from last year. I think they'll go there confident. Mm. but yeah, we will look to try and take any advantage that we can because mm. we don't have great record against Tottenham in general. There were suggestions the other day, right, about Sean Dyche. Some people saying that he may get the sack. I mean, I just can't but he could get the sack. I haven't heard that. I really haven't. Um, it's definitely not really doing the rounds among All the Burnley, Burnley fans. fans still right behind him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's been with us six years. What he's achieved across those six years, you don't just forget that. Uh, I don't... As, although we're going through a bit of a sticky kind of season, I don't, I don't think we'll seriously get relegated. Um, I think the board will stay behind him. They, they really value him. Um, and I think, I think we'll turn it round. Um, mm. We're not too concerned. And like I said, I haven't heard any even murmurings of discontent amongst the fans. Okay, well that's brilliant. That's good to hear. Um, Chelsea. Tricky game for them. They go away to Brighton, who mm. turn up against the big teams um, at home. Yeah, um, they, did be, they famously this season beat Man United at home. Yeah. So it won't be an easy game, but you fancy Chelsea to, especially I mean, after beating City, to yeah. get a result there? I mean, the thing is, when I look at how Brighton have played, what the results they've got, it's pretty much a one one goal difference between the other top six. And then also teams like Everton or or basically teams that could actually get into that seventh place so for us it is going to be a now win but it's going to also going to be a tough game so yeah i mean i do think chelsea will try to get the win but it's not going to be an easy one mm. okay okay listen we're gonna uh, have challenge robbie coming up very soon right i swear <laughs> to ch- you guys get a chance to uh, test me out in the uh, in the predictions and see you know we see if you guys will be able to beat me this week and I'm, I'm feeling good because, well, I was going to save it until um, we actually got into it, but I can't wait. I won last week. <laughs> I battered him. You know I mean, yeah, again, that's another victory for me. But um, we're going to get into Challenge Robbie very soon. But before we get into that, I want to find out if my guests in the studio today 
are real fans or plastic fans, right? Oh, that that's one. when I put you through oh. the quiz. I'm that's telling you, you, that's not going to be an easy one. Right? I'm telling you, that's not going to be easy. I'll put you guys through the quiz now. Collectively, you can all team up to mm. answer these questions, right? Okay. Right, as three questions to test your <laughs> fandom knowledge, right? Right, question number one. I want you guys, right, think carefully about this. There's three Yorkshire teams, yeah? And I want you to tell me which one of these clubs has the biggest capacity at their ground. Which one has the biggest ground, <sighs> okay. yeah? Okay. The three teams are Sheffield Wednesday, who play at Hillsborough, Leeds United, who play at Elland Road, and Huddersfield Town, of course, they play at the John Smiths. Right, they're in the Premier League, the other two in the Championship. Oh, I know this. Which one of those three has the biggest ground? Oh, That's got to be Hills, Elland Road, Hills, isn't it? I am not sure. I do remember going over this, but I don't... Oh. Road, like I'm not sure 000. if it's Leeds it's or is it Huddersfield. I don't know. Elland Road's not actually that big in terms of a ground. Hillsborough's a bigger ground. Okay. It's not Huddersfield. Okay. It's tiny. All right. <laughs> oh, I'll take your word for it. We'll okay. Because okay, it doesn't seem like Sheffield Wednesday to me. You go with what Gillian said, yeah? I mean, have you been to Hillsborough? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. okay. all, all my days of watching championship football. Well, then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Right, so you, 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 you go with Gillian. You sure about this, Gillian? Positive. All right. <laughs> Let's have a look, yeah? Huddersfield in Yorkshire, Premier League team. You're right. They've got the smallest out of the two. 24,500. Yeah? Hmm. Still bigger than Burnley. Then the other two, <laughs> the other two, Leeds United, Ellen Road, and Hill, uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Hillsborough. One of them's got a capacity of 39,732 and the other one's got a capacity of 37,890. You're right. All right. Sheffield Wednesday. Hillsborough no, has got play. a 39,732. Wow. Okay. Bigger capacity. Proper fan. She's been there. <laughs> I like that. From her days in the championship, she knew. And it is a real trick one because a lot of people, what you were saying at first, Drifty, yeah, Leeds, yeah. everyone thinks Leeds because they are the biggest club in Yorkshire. Mm. But Sheffield wins, they have the biggest grounds. Yeah. Okay, fair points. Fair fair points. Elian Road's quite an old stadium. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See, see, you, you didn't think that championship knowledge would help you out here, right? Right, let me, sure let me, let me, let me ask you this one. <laughs> the first team to win the league, the football league, not the Premier League, the football league. That's like back in the day. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you three clubs. Okay, cool. I'm going to give you three clubs. Burnley. No. Preston North End. Mm. Man United. Which one of those three teams was the first team... <sighs> To win the football league, when must was be the Preston. Fo- when was the, was the football league created? Because I don't remember. That it was must a- be Preston because I'm sure Preston won go. the league, and it wouldn't have been any time. Preston, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure. sure it was I'm sure Burnley. It's <laughs> That's gonna be embarrassing if it. You was. don't forget. <laughs> 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 you know, right, right your, um, your your credibility is on the yeah, line here, right? Because um, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're um, a big. I mean, I I would. I, Preston were huge back in, yeah, yeah, back I'd in go, the day. I'd go with, I'd, I'd go <laughs> Preston. This was in 1888-89. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I Preston... I think Man though. United were even around then. Preston, I'll go yeah, Preston. Yeah, I'd say Preston, yeah, Preston. then, yeah. I know they've won the league but, well, Yeah, Burnley were a founding member, but I don't think we didn't win it. No. Gillian, mm, your God. credibility is on the line as a Burnley <laughs> fan here. Are Definitely. you sure you want to go with Preston? Yeah, we didn't win it till 1921 or something like that, so... Is it? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. She's good. It is Preston. She's good. I like the way you handled it under pressure. In my heart. Yeah, she's good. She's good. No, she's right. Preston. When are you two going to contribute to this? I, I mean, I mean, the thing is, though, when are you two I mean, going to contribute to this? Is, can can I be back? honest? My history of these things is like starting from the 1995 plastic. all that. Plastic. <laughs> I was born in 98. Plastic. I was born in 98. How much personnel? I don't care. Plastic. Right. Excuses, man. Typical man, isn't it? Right. Listen. Right. Hear this one now. Final question. Right. First British team to win the European Cup. Ooh. I thought it was Champions League European Ooh. Cup the first I British think I team remember that one. was it Manchester United Liverpool or Celtic I want, well I it, want to say Celtic because you said British team <laughs> that yeah, might be a, plus, a trick yeah, question plus I don't remember Celtic winning it anywhere yeah. around us winning our first one or since it has to be Celtic 
So it, you lot are lucky you got Gillian here, you know. She's got all of these right for you. It is Celtic. It is Celtic in 19... <laughs> 1967. <laughs> I'm right here. Uh, I'm right did here. Did you say something? Yeah, I said something. Okay. Oh, Celtic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was actually Celtic. 1967. I'm on the spot with the man himself, Ashley Waters, big actor, big Arsenal fan. Welcome along to the show. Thanks for having me, man. You know what? Um, Arsenal. You're local to the area. Mm. I, I don't, you were always local to the area, but you're, no, local, no. you're, you're local now um, to North London. Mm. But what made you get into Arsenal? Um, if I'm honest with you, uh, Ian Wright. He, so I grew up in Peckham mm. originally. Um, some say I should be supporting like Millwall or whatever, but <laughs> ain't gonna have that. I always, I always bring, bring up the fact of like Woolwich Arsenal. Yeah. That was close, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, my, like Ian Wright was a family friend. Okay, okay. Yeah, so like my cousins, kind of uncles, kind of relatives mm. and friends or whatever. So he was like, when I was that like, young, I, I used to see him at family parties and stuff like that. Do you wow. know what I mean? Um, not to kind of talk to or yeah. whatever, but he was around. So when I remember my stepdad um, told me, well, no, when my stepdad kind of got me into football, he was like, you know, we know him or whatever. And I kind of started watching. Mm. And it just amazed me, do you know what I mean? Like I was just mesmerized by how good he was. I don't, you know, I, I personally, I hold him higher than Henri, for me, mm. only because he's from the ends, do you know what I'm saying? So it was my first, it was me seeing someone that come from like Broccoli, Turner and whatever on the ends, mm. places that I knew and kind of made it big. Yeah. At a late stage as well in his career, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? I think it was quite amazing. So. Um, he, he, that, that, when he comes to Arsenal, he just holds it like a, a big place in my heart, and that kind of that's kind of what got me in. I had seasons where I dipped out, dipped back in. You know, things mm. change, things rearrange, and whatever. But um, like more recently, I've been really like, you know, as, a, as, as more as an adult, been mm. more focused on um, on kind of just following following mm. the team a bit more. You know what I mean? Mm. And, uh, we know you're a busy oh, man. Mm. Thank you very much for, for doing no, this no interview. Problem, man. No problem. What a career you've had as well. It's, you been, all, it's been all right. I can't it's complain. been all right. It's been, been all, right. all right, he says, right? I'm still so here solid. in the toilet, isn't it? And I'm still like... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, still, on, I'm still on the road. That's what we bro. love about you, man. I'm from yeah. So Solid Crew, mm. right? That was an amazing um, ride. And then now into the acting. Yeah. You know, and brilliant you're doing brilliant stuff with the acting i mean it's incredible what you're doing in with your acting career yeah. as i said you come from the music um and then you, you know you had a little rough time as yeah, well yeah. coming up but the way in which you come through that and what you've achieved now i mean it's been absolutely amazing yeah man i mean it's just all you know i, I thank everyone that's i've had some brilliant people around me like don't get yeah. me wrong um my mom and other people and whatever but and my wife of course but like you know it's just that it's always been like determination to be fair. You see that time, the, the hard times that I had was, was a blip, was me slightly losing my way, slightly getting caught up in, in the wrong things or the trappings of what goes with mm. what's going on. Mm. We, we can all be tempted and, you know what I mean, mm. pulled down by others and like stuff you said, like especially that. Especially well. when you're young. You know what, yeah. sometimes I meet a lot of these footballers and mm. I'm like, when you, you see them playing on a pitch, right? And then when you meet them, <clears throat> that's the thing that always strikes me. It's like, it's only a kid, man. Mm. And you know, you. just imagine, yeah, I mean. just imagine, you know, you look at Michael Jackson, people like that, then they have no life. Like, because you're playing football all the time, like to be on this level and to be playing at eight, it's no joke. Like, we get, you can't just take it for granted. It's like, it's not us kicking ball on a Sunday. Mm. You know what I'm saying? These men are like, they're created and moulded into being a certain, and when you're doing that day in and day out or whatever, um, there's going to be times where you kind of, you might want to rebel against it. You might feel that you're not, the same as everyone else, and you know what I mean? Or you, you know what I mean? So it's like, sometimes you have to, when you're growing up, you test things, you test boundaries and whatever, and it's just like, it's mm. understandable. Um, not always acceptable, but understandable at the end of the day. So, mm. you know, I went through through those things. I'm, I'm a father of eight now, man. I'm 36 years old, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. My eldest son is 18, he's 19 in January. Wow. So, um, I've learned a lot of harsh lessons, but I mean, you learn the whole of your life, innit? You're going to yeah. learn to the grave at the end of the day. That's it. You, there's always something new around the corner, a new experience. Mm. So 
I just embrace it and try and stay as focused as possible now, man. Well, you listen, you're doing a fantastic job, yeah, man. Thank I love you very it. much. Also, where are we going to finish this season? Um, looking good. I mean, I'm not... Ho I'd love to say top, to be fair. Mm, you know, everyone's going to be like, eh, whatever. Yeah, say, eh, he's turning into tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, not, it's not optimism. That, yeah. that is like... That's, where I, I, that's what I would want. That's what, want worst, yeah. that's what I was talking about. Universal law and saying what you want things to be. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to talk things into existence. So I'd rather say that than anything else. I don't want to be the guy that's going, well, let's go for top four. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I think that's under, like, we're underachieving in that sense. But right now, that'd be achievement. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. It, that, that's all I'm going to say. Time to uh, get into this week's games and get your guys' predictions on it. As I said, I won last week's uh, challenge, Robbie. And uh, we got three games here, three really tight games that are hard to predict, right? The first one we're going to go, I'm going to start with you, um, Julian, seeing as you're a real maestro at all this, right? <laughs> is uh, Liverpool versus Manchester United. That's the big game of the weekend. That's the game that everybody's going to be focusing on on Sunday. I remember for this, if you get the exact result right, you get three points. If you get the outcome right, you get one point. Nil point if you get the result <laughs> wrong. Um, I'm going to back Liverpool. Um, yeah? Yeah. I'm, you never know with Mourinho and, and these sorts of fixtures, but I, I think Liverpool might just have a bit too much, particularly if Mo, uh, Mo Salah's back on form. So um, I'm going 2-1 Liverpool. 2-1 Liverpool. What about you, Drifty? Oh, the way I she's to. been going with everything else so far, I just follow her with everything <laughs> she says. But what, what do you, um, you, you? It's going to be a tough game. It will be. It will be. It's either going to be a really lucky United win or we batter them. I don't really see a middle ground in this game. Um, I got to stick with my boys. I hate giving score predictions, and I feel like I'm putting something in the universe that I shouldn't. <laughs> um, one 0 Liverpool. You just said you. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm. I'm trying to use reverse psychology. I love football fans, man. I'm I trying love to use reverse fans, psychology. Right? It's either going to be a close thing or we're going to batter them one nil. <laughs> I don't believe that it. Ain't I know. Come I don't on, believe back it. your team, man. Right. Back your team. What is your universe stuff? Back your team. What do you think they're going to do? Two nil. Two. <laughs> <laughs> but the performance will be a battle. He's so worried about The performance will be a battle. All right, 2-0. So you go 2-0 Liverpool. Remember, battling right. doesn't always have to mean the scoreline. We battered Napoli and only beat them 1-0. OK, here he goes. Right, so, <laughs> so, so Drifty's going 2-0. Um, Alex, what about you on that game? Initially, I thought maybe a 2-2 because that would be logical given the performance against Arsenal and all that. But then I realised it's Liverpool at home and, you know, for some reason, I just feel like Mourinho is going to pull something out of the bag unexpectedly. Yeah. I think it's going to be 2-1 Manu. I two said one. it, I'm sorry, but it's. I think it's going to be 2-1 Manu. Okay. Right, me, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I was at Arsenal Manu the other day. Manu are very fortunate to get that 2-2. Um, two, two. I'm going 2-0 Liverpool as well. I'm going with you, Drifty. So, 2-0 to Liverpool for me as well. Um... Let's kick off with you on this one, Alex. The next game we'll talk about Huddersfield versus Newcastle. Don't worry, I'm putting pretty proper difficult ones that are hard to predict. Um, yeah, I expected Huddersfield, that one. they got uh, lost at Arsenal last week, but they put up a really good fight, only lost 1 0. Huddersfield, Newcastle, I mean, that's already a tough game and it's very hard to predict. So give us, give us a, that's what but I've chosen. But at the same time, I feel like Rafa is going to pull something out the bag in the last few minutes and it's going to be a 2 1 win. 2 1 win to Newcastle. Drifty. Yeah, this is a tough one, isn't it? Huddersfield, you just don't know what you're going to get. Forrest Gump. Um, <laughs> I think this game will be 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one draw? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go 1-1 one, one as well. Um, that's more wishful thinking from yeah. a family <laughs> perspective. To okay. share the points between them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going for a Huddersfield win. I think they're quite... Well, not that they've had a great record at home, but I think... If they're going to stay in this division, yeah. this is the sort of game that they have to win. Mm -hmm. They are very resilient last week from what I saw of them. And I think Newcastle, that might have took a bit out of them, that defeat. They, you know, it was quite a bad defeat for them. They'll be missing Yedlin in that game as well. He's been playing well for them. Mm -hmm. I'm going for Huddersfield winning this by a goal to nil. So 1-0 to Huddersfield. Uh, final game, we'll start with you in the, on this one. No, uh, Gillian, we'll start with you on this one. 
Crystal Palace versus Leicester. I think that that will be 2-0 to Crystal Palace. 2-0 to Palace. Oh, yeah. Leicester have been playing all right. I know, but Crystal Palace... really Pal- even Crystal, game. Really, Crystal really even Palace game. Crystal Palace at home. I, yeah, I, I don't They've like... only won one at home, haven't they? Yeah, against Burnley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> It's all right, we've lost 10 games, so it's I didn't fine. mean to do that, you know. <laughs> Is it 10? We've lost 10 already this season. Wow. Man, they've only lost 12 all last season. We've lost 10 already. Wow. And, and according to you, you got this. It's all We're, we're, we're going to turn it round. OK, OK, all right. right. Going to turn it round. <laughs> there's worse, I think there's genuinely worse teams in the division than us. So. Who are they? <laughs> I'm sorry, Julian. Sorry, Julian. Sorry. No, I'm going to stop picking on you. Keep coming. <laughs> Too many shots here. No. So you're, you're, you're going 2 0. 2 0 Palace. 2 0 Palace. Yeah. Drifty. Um, you would think Crystal Palace would win this, but they have been really poor lately. Like, But then, you know, that's normally why they'll win because no one's expecting them and they are at home. But Leicester are a good team. Madison is a baller. Um, mm. Getting him for Mares and keeping all that money, that's amazing business, man. Um, I think Leicester will have too much for them, you know. I yeah. think it might be like 2-1 Leicester. So, Alex, your prediction? Well, see, to me, I mean, Palace can do good things at times. I mean, obviously they won 2-0 against Burnley like one or two weeks ago. But, you know, given the current form that they're in, I don't know. I just feel like Leicester can do something magical. And I feel like there's... Leicester can do something really unexpected Give me your for them. Then. So I'll say 3-1 for three Leicester. 3-1. So we come towards the end of the show today. Listen, I've got to really, really thank my guests today. They've been brilliant. Gillian, the knowledge I'm going to start calling you. <laughs> right? Thank you very much for coming on today. And I wish Burnley all the luck from now till the rest of the season. I love going to Burnley. Yeah. I love going to a lovely old stadium. Except um, in two weeks. Oh, okay, she's getting cocky as well. <laughs> it's in two weeks. So, all right, what's going to happen in two weeks? We can go out there and bat you. <laughs> right, but no, no. Um, thanks very much for coming on, Julian. Um, Drifty, I, I know it's going to be a real nervy weekend for you. As always, it's, it, man. It's one of those weekends. Yeah, I, I know. I, I had this the other day with, with the North London derby. It's either Monday's either going to be the best day ever for you or you're going to want to crawl under a rock. Yeah. It's one of them too. Yeah, it's a it, horrible it's horrible leading up to it but it can be all joyous after yeah it's one of them games I just don't actually even want to watch <laughs> I know what it's like you know what I mean? it's like but it should be a great game thanks for coming on yeah nice no, and uh, Alex thank you very much for coming on as well and mm, yeah. uh no, I can't wish Chelsea luck. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a bit oh, like come you, on. I, I might have to take that bath lock that you said. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you've got to wash it As an off. Arsenal fan, I can't wish Chelsea luck. <laughs> but I wish you luck, Carmen. Thank you very yeah, much for thanks. coming on today. Um, you've been listening to Channel 4's The Real Football Fan Show podcast. Make sure that you subscribe, rate us and review us. It's very important. And don't forget that you can watch The Real Football Fan Show on all four right now. May four the fans... Oh!